So this, this is my Christmas video. Last year I did a, a video about upright walking Christmas trees. Um, it's kind of hard to top that. There just isn't a lot of upright walking Christmas tree type stories out there, that, at least that I could find. And so this year I just thought I would uh, keep it simple. I'm going to talk about a um, a Christmas Day missing time case from the UK. It was Christmas Day, and the only thing Robert Shaw wanted to do was get dressed up and head into Manchester City to visit some friends. While most people would be enjoying time with family over elaborate meal setups, Shaw was really only interested in sampling the nightlife. He called for a taxi to be out front of his Ermston home by 10 p.m. At approximately 9.40 p.m., Shaw peered out of his front window and observed an aircraft quite high up in the sky. His passing curiosity suddenly changed to shock and horror when the aircraft started to plummet towards the ground. The event now had his full attention as he anticipated the impact, which never came. Less than 30 feet away from his house was a clearing. Shaw could only watch on, puzzled, as the aircraft he thought was certain to crash was now hovering silently, about a hundred feet above the trees in said clearing. He realized quickly that this was not any kind of aircraft that he had seen before. Shaw could make out the craft was column shaped and had five red lights in a sideways formation, which, although they were shining brightly, surprisingly did not illuminate the surrounding area, not the trees nor the ground underneath. Shaw further noticed that there did not appear to be any sound emanating from the object as it slowly descended down into the clearing. Eager for a closer look, Shaw stepped outside and began walking towards the landing point. He didn't get very far before he was overtaken by an innate kind of fear. The hairs on the back of his neck stood up and negative thoughts clouded his mind. Instantly spooked, Shaw immediately turned around and walked back to his house. Understandably, he wanted no part of whatever was in that clearing. He decided to try and put it out of his mind and just wait for his taxi. And that was it. Shaw awoke in his bed. It was the next morning. He could not remember anything after he stepped inside his house. He could not remember if the taxi came. He could not remember if the strange craft ever left the clearing. Nothing. One moment he was walking back to his house, and the next he was in bed. Despite repeated attempts, Shaw's memory of the previous night was almost blank, except the strange craft. Following this, Shaw suddenly began experiencing a series of bad dreams. In these dreams, humanoid-like creatures were manipulating him. He was convinced that these dreams were not the product of his imagination, but rather real events that he was half-remembering. After nine months, he reached out to the Manchester Aerial Phenomenon Investigation Team, or MAPIT, who sent out several investigators to the scene. The Mappet investigators who arrived at Shaw's home sensed that they would have to rely solely on his testimony, since it seemed unlikely that there would be any physical evidence left at the site given the passage of time. Surprisingly, a daytime search of the area yielded some interesting findings. The team came across some flattened reeds, which were broken at the base, covered in a black substance and all facing in the same direction. They also found a circular shape within the clearing measuring just over 18 feet in all directions. The circle appeared to be due to a lack of normal plant growth including the flattened reeds, which investigators noted later had never grown back. As well, three trees to the east of the site seemed to show extensive heat damage from the base to about 40 feet up the trunk. The team obtained soil and plant samples from inside and outside the affected area. Investigator Tony Eccles would help arrange a professional analysis of the samples 
which was carried out by the Environmental Science Department of Manchester University. Shaw was interviewed by the team several times and was found to be quite an intelligent and rational person who was desperate to make sense of the experience. He simply wanted to account for the missing time. He would eventually ask about hypnosis, hoping that it might unlock his hidden memories. He was informed of the procedure and the issues that arise from using it. It should be noted that Manchester Aerial Phenomenon Investigation Team were strongly against hypnosis being utilized in investigations. Despite this, Shaw was adamant that hypnosis be used regardless of the outcome. This seemed to highlight just how desperate Shaw was to regain his memories. The hypnosis was arranged and carried out by a professional psychoanalyst with over 20 years of experience in his field. Putting aside their reservations about hypnosis, the Mappet team did find some aspects of Shaw's testimony interesting. During the regression, Shaw retraced his steps and it became clear that he had an actual fact ventured farther into the clearing than he had previously thought. It was at this time that Shaw began to feel uncomfortable and decided to head back. Upon arriving home, he checked the time on his watch. It read 10.32 p.m. He was confused by this as he had only been outside for a few minutes. In reality, 40 minutes had elapsed. Shaw also recalled that his shoes were caked in mud, yet his conscious mind was convinced that he had only walked on the concrete path. As a result of the regression, Shaw was able to draw what he had seen. He paid particular attention to the crowd, portraying the entities around it as secondary items. He believed that the column-shaped object was organic in nature, and at one point he actually spoke to one of the creatures, though he was unwilling to reveal the nature of the conversation. Shaw also discussed other peculiar experiences he had as a child along with his family. Mappet reached out to Shaw's brothers, sisters, and mother, and they confirmed to investigators that there had indeed been some odd experiences in their lives. This included UFO sightings, strange lights, missing time, and even possible encounters with unusual humanoid-like beings. Shaw claimed to have called a taxi on the night of the encounter, so Mappet reached out to the firm to confirm this. Unfortunately, they were unable to help. They indicated that unless it involved an official police investigation, they simply could not hand over that type of information. Eventually, a person at the taxi company would confirm off the record that there was a no-show on that night. A no-show was an indication that the rider was either not at his home at the time of the taxi's arrival, or he was not aware that it was there and failed to accept the ride. Air traffic control also confirmed that there were no scheduled flights over the Ermston area during the time Shaw witnessed the aerial object. The results of the analysis carried out by the Environmental Science Department of Manchester University confirm that the bark from the trees had been burnt by, quote, intense heat. The soil also showed distinctly different mineral oil content between the controlled and affected samples. Outside the area, the mineral oil in milligrams per kilogram was 95% higher than inside the area. There did not appear to be any reasonable explanation. The pH balance of the soil was also different, but it was suggested that this was quite normal for soil from the river valley. Steve Mara, one of the investigators on the case, would eventually write of Shaw's experience in the March 2011 issue of Phenomena magazine. Anyways, that's the video guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.
Thank you.